A busy week for K-State on the recruiting trail continues because the Wildcats added another commitment on Friday. They pick up their first offensive lineman of the class, a position that there's a lot of offensive linemen a season ago. We know that they have some pretty specific targets in mind for that position that if everything goes according to plan, they'll go hot and heavy on two or three dudes and they'll be locked in at that position. That's not something that they'll want to worry about too deep into, well, probably deep into the summer. You'd hope that by the end of June, you have those guys locked down if everything goes the way you want. Who K-State got on Friday, though, is Will Kimna, an offensive lineman from Jefferson City, Missouri. And this is a guy that K-State, I think for a long time, you've been saying to D.Y. and I, hey, Kimna's going to Kimna's gonna pop. This is somebody they really, really want. He, he's high on K-State, and K-State was able to come through and deliver with Will Kimna. Yeah, this is a big commit for K State uh, because he was just such a big target for K State really for the past few months. I, I don't think that it's a coincidence that K State getting hot and heavy with Kimna probably coincided with losing out for Andrew Babalola and ultimately ended up ending up losing out for uh, for uh, Broderick Joel uh, because those two kind of slipped away from K State. You saw them kind of pivot back to Will Kimna who at, at during his first initial recruitment during the fall, you were thinking, oh, it's probably K-State, Nebraska, Nebraska probably in the lead. And then K-State in the last two months came in, swooped in and really knocked Nebraska out. And the other thing that is interesting is that uh, Cincinnati and Duke were also kind of hanging around and were actually the two official visits that Kimna had scheduled uh, before his spring visits. And then as the spring went on, you saw him kind of dissipate from those two in case it really rose to the top. And it just shows how good of a recruiter, recruiter. And I still think that he's still probably underrated nationally, how good Connor Riley is. Because when he locks in and gets on the targets, I, I, it's hard for Casey to lose because he is so good and is so personal with the recruits. Well, we, so we've talked about it a lot. You talk about Kim to, hey, he's, he's probably a little undervalued right now in terms of his ranking. And, and the 88.22, like that's not a bad overall score to be at right now. Plenty of room for growth. And again, like the on 300 is, is kind of the, the top look at things in terms of recruiting. Given how many guys are trying to play high school or college football every single year, 474 is not a bad spot to be right now. Is this the kind of guy that you could see moving up a considerable amount over the you know next six months before he comes to K-State? Yeah, this is definitely the kind of recruit that I think could jump up into the, into the on 300 rankings. He's just outside right now. And, and the guys that I think that you really need to hone in on and look at are the guys that are in that 87 to 89 range and the on three uh, initial ranking. Because those are the kind of guys that will bump up and get up to that four-star level if they play their way there. And the other thing with Kemna, too, is that he's listed at 250 on his on three profile. I believe now he's closer to 260, 265. So it's kind of like uh, when Gus Hawkins and Caden Massey were in their junior season and going into their senior season. that They were in that 250 level. And then during the spring they got up to like 260, 265. And now, yeah, Hawkins and Massey are both in that 280, 285 range. So I'd imagine that Kimna, as he grows and grows into his body more, because remember, he's 6'5", 6 6'6". 6 6. He's a tall dude, so it takes him a little bit to kind of grow into that. And I think that over the summer, you'll see him work out more. And the other thing, too, that I wouldn't be surprised about if, if this happens is now that he's committed, that doesn't mean that he won't go to a camp at K-State. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he goes to the K-State offensive and defensive line camp, which is one of the best in the country. We saw Gus Hawkins go to the offensive and defensive line camp last summer, despite already being committed. So I think that he'll go and really kind of grow under the tutelage of Connor Riley and kind of just see what, what it's like to be coached under Coach Riley for the first time. I was going through and doing some looking here because now with uh, the way everything is set up and, and how it works out, K-State – in terms of where they they rank in the overall ranking of their class right now compared to everybody else. It's nothing impressive at this point in time. They're still outside the top 50. They're at 55 right now, but it's only three commits. But one of the things to always keep in mind here is I think more people need to, to go and just look at like the average ranking yeah. of the recruit or the average rating that is there. 
K-State's inside the top 40 nationally with that. I think they're right around 34, 35 in terms of the quality of their, their commits. And I think almost every one of these guys that we've talked about, you've said has a legitimate chance of getting a bump. Dylan Duff is a guy like that that we've talked about. And in addition to that, there are still some bigger fish out there that currently have those ratings that are going to give you that bump that K-State seems to at least be in a pretty decent spot for. So Will Kim the contributes to that, and it's painting the picture that after it was a little slow going, we've gotten into May, and K-State recruiting is kind of kicking up, and and these guys, they know what they're doing. The staff is has themselves in a good spot. Yeah, it, it, it's fun to, I don't want to say spike the football in, the, in this sense, but it's it's a long it, it's a long process. Recruitment can take a long time. They can take a little time. Will Kemna was the one that took a little time once K-State really ramped up on him. But like Weston Polk was a little bit slower. Dylan Duff was fast. But there were guys even in the last class that some of them were just slow. But if, if you stay the course, it's never as bad as it seems. It's also never as good as it seems. So I'm not trying to paint the picture that, oh, it's all sunshine and rainbows. Because, I mean, for a while... K State was in kind of not a rough spot, but they were in a spot where they were just really close and just couldn't get the iceberg. And now that you're seeing them kind of get to the the peak here, that I think they'll try to ride the momentum. And I wouldn't be surprised if they try and push for another commitment before June begins, uh, because I think that you want to be in that three four range. Because I still think that they will be at double digit commitments by July or through July. But you would want to be in that four range going into July or June because you don't want to have all of the pressure to get all of your commits in June. All right. So the other thing that I'll, I'll point out here is last year, this is just to kind of get a, a look at things moving forward and where people should be at in terms of the current Big 12, because that's what these recruiting classes are. So the class of 2024, the guys that are going to be freshmen this coming season. If you go and look at where K-State ranked, we know that, hey, this is going to be a smaller class for K-State. They ended up with 15 guys. Um, that was the smallest in the Big 12 with an asterisk. The other two, we know that there are very different circumstances. Arizona lost their head coach, so there were decommitments and things of that nature. And then the other is Colorado, and we know that that's a train wreck, and we know you know, Dion, <laughs> he's not interested in guys that are going to take – you know one and a half years to see the field. So K-State was the lowest from that standpoint in terms of total commits. But if you go and look, they were fourth in terms, well, they were fifth overall in the class, but then they were fourth in terms of the average rating and they were behind just Texas Tech, Colorado, UC and UCF, which Tech and UCF in very talent rich states, they get some overflow, but also like credit needs to go to their two head coaches that have some serious momentum going for those schools right now. Um, and then Colorado, and Colorado who, like eight. Eight yeah, Colorado, two. tiny class, <laughs> but a five star, three, four star, some high end threes. Like that's just how it goes for them. That's where K state sat last year. It seems like they might be trending in that direction this season. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if K state's near the top by average again. And, and some of that will definitely be fluctuated on getting some of the higher end guys like Lincoln cure or, like Brock Heath or like Lucas Algeyer, because if they can not nail down those three, I think the class will definitely be within the top four or five of the Big 12 in terms of average. And, and I think that in a world that we live in with varying class sizes, you don't know the whole strategy behind some other coaches recruiting wise. That average, I think, is probably the best way to go about this and how you look at a class because. It, it it just very there's just so much variance in class size now because there's no 25 uh, man limit. Some classes will be huge because a, a coach was just hired, or some classes will be small because a coach was just fired right before uh, the signing period. So it, it just there's so much fluctuation with that that I think that you, it's something to take a, a step back and just look at the average class size. And I think that K State will be near the top again in average class size uh, rating. All right, before we close things out, uh, one last thing on Will Kimna. Where do you see him fitting into the grand scheme of K-State's offensive line over the coming years, uh, considering, hey, where will he play? But also, there is a pretty good stable of offensive linemen around that guys that are currently on the roster from last season that still have two years or so of eligibility left. And then also, 
we know of all the offensive linemen that came uh, in the 2024 class. So how does Will Kim to fit in big picture at K-State? Big picture, I think that Will Kim was probably going to end up being a tackle. I, I just think at his size, and he's really agile. He's everything that Connor Riley wants on an offensive lineman. I, I know that I say that a lot with some of the offensive linemen that they go after, but Connor Riley has a type, really, really agile, really smart and nasty blockers and, and will Kimna has some really good run blocking tape as well as good pass protection and it, he's somebody that you can really work work with too because i think that there is a world where he could play on the inside as well but right now i, I would say that he's probably a tackle all right that's good to know that he can play tackle a question that's been asked many times uh, it, it, over the years in, in KSO lore. But Will Kimna, he can do it. He's going to do it at K-State. And uh, he's also a guy to keep your eye on as the, the season starts for his senior year. And uh, the ranking bumps continue to happen because he is somebody that could probably find themselves moving up there. And uh, that'd be good for the Cats, who also have plenty of others that are on their list that they're trying to get in for the class of 2025. If you want more on that, head over to kstateonline.com. Find us at on three. And then right here on the YouTube, Drew and I always have a video for you. Every time the cats get a commit, uh, you know, sometimes they spring on us at a, a bad time or whatever. And, and we get to it a little later, like at nine 30 at night when Drew's in a hotel lobby, but uh, we get it figured out and we will always bring it here for you. So Will yeah, Kimna so is a cat. So sometimes you're at a hotel in Oklahoma City loading up a U-Haul. Sometimes sometimes we're really prepared. Yeah, <laughs> very prepared. All right, that'll do it for us. We will be back sometime again uh, with a commitment update and then also plenty of content over the next week as well. So stay with us at K-State Online. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth.